Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is material, the component mask. So, I've gone ahead and I've created a quick little example here. I don't actually have anything hooked up. We're going to cover what it does and why we're going to use it in the first place. So, traditionally when you have, let's say, a texture, you have your full output, RGBA, and then you have your individual outputs, which your red, green, blue, and your alpha. So, using something like a texture, if you only wanted one of the channels, you could just simply pull it out and connect it to whatever input you want. Now, some things don't allow you to do that. And this is where a component mask can come in handy. So, to pull up the component mask, you would just type in mask and look for the component mask section. Now, this is one thing where it gets a little tricky because even though it says component mask, it's another one of those where they've shortened it and it just shows mask as the known itself. Now, the mask has an input and an output. What it outputs is based on the parameters you check over here. So this will go ahead and take in up to four channels for an input, an RGBA, for example. So let's say we took our, temp, our texture sample and duplicated it, and we put it into our mask. What we can see on the output is whatever we've chosen over here. So for example, I've told it to take this four channel input and mask out just the red and the green. If I want just the red, I would change it to show just the red. If I wanted just the alpha, for example, I would do just the alpha. And then this output is going to be whatever you have told it to mask out. So for example, if I had all four of them checked, it's going to be the same thing as if I passed through all four channels. So for example, what we want to use our mask for is in the situation where we don't have the ability to choose which channels we have access to. So this is our absolute world position node. It outputs an RGB, an X, Y, and a Z. Now if I was to put that into my texture sample for the UVs, we're going to run into an error. And it's going to say failed float 3 to float 2. Our UVs are X, Y, not X, Y, Z. So we want basically just the X and the Y from our world position. And to do that, we can use our mask. So if I was to plug it directly into our mask and then plug it directly into here, you're going to find it's going to compile and it's not going to give us any errors. We're not going to give my desired result because I'm not using my other nodes yet, but we'll go and hook those up. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm going to take the X and Y of the world position. I'm going to go ahead and divide this by a thousand because I want it to be much smaller. Hook that into my mask. Tell my mask I only want the red and the green. I only want the X and the Y. And then I want to hook this into my panner, which is going to allow it to move over time. And then hook that up into my texture sample. My texture sample is a little noise sample here. And now if I look at what I have, let's put it on the square. You're going to see I actually have the X and the Y for my world position filtering through a mask and a panner being applied to this noise node, and I'm getting this cool little panning effect using the world position itself. So if this item was in the world, for example, let's take a cube, we'll drop it here, we'll throw our component mask onto it, and pull it up. You'll notice that no matter where this item is, the noise node is going to be the same. It's not going to change suddenly. So if we were to, let's say, resize this, the noise node is gonna change appropriately. And basically it's using the world position of this item to determine how the noise node works. So it's useful, for example, let's, let's put it on our ground and let's see. So here's an example. Take a look at our ground. It looks kind of like maybe we have a cloud cover and these are the shadows from the cloud cover and if you notice this item right here can be jutted right in and since it's using the same thing they're using world position even though they're two different items of two different sizes our world position and our component mask is letting it look like this cloud cover is going over everything completely even though it's actually using two different materials running differently 
So kind of cool. So that is what our mask component mask is for. It basically allows you to take in up to four inputs and output up to four outputs, but you get to choose which ones you want. So it's useful in this case to convert something that is a fixed, like a float three, into something like a float two. Or it's also useful if you want to combine, like maybe you want to pull out these two, and then later you want to put it back into a three, you can use an append afterwards. So that is our component mask node. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.